Heather, I will start with you. You spoke with Bowlesby. Um, I'm sure a lot of fans are out there wondering how can different conferences be looking at certainly similar circumstances and the same medical data and, and come to such different conclusions. How would you explain it? Well, a couple things. Bob Bowlesby said that their presidents heard from two representatives, two doctors from each of the Power Five conferences. And everyone has to remember that geographically, we're talking about different situations related to the coronavirus pandemic. The Pac-12's decision was based on the here and now. We cannot play football because it's not safe. Their doctors told them they are afraid about the disparity in the availability of testing and the turnaround time on each campus within the Pac-12, and they are reacting right now to the positivity rate throughout particularly California, obviously, and Arizona. So that's unique to the Pac-12. Meanwhile, the Big Ten decision was made more of, I, don't, I guess, trying to prevent things from happening and getting worse. Kevin Warren, the Big Ten commissioner, said, we're getting ready to this point to put on helmets and pads. This is not a safe situation. They are concerned about what could happen, whereas the Pac-12 was reacting to what is happening. It's different depending on where you are. And the Big 12 said, hey, it's safe to proceed slowly and cautiously. So again, it's worth pointing out. Bowlesby and, and the conference, they're not saying we're playing and that's it. They're saying we're moving forward with the goal of playing and we'll continue to see where it takes us, right? And when are they scheduled to begin? September 26th. That doesn't mean on September 25th their doctors say, hey, we can't do this. Bowlesby said if they tell us you've got two wheels off the track and you're headed for a train wreck, they throw up their hands and they surrender the season. This is just where they are right now. They're not ready to call it off yet. All right, so Paul Feinbaum, again, you have continued to have probably as many conversations about this as anyone on your radio show and other places. What is your perspective on all of this this morning? Yeah, Greeny, I, I don't know the name of the epidemiologist that Bowlesby is using, but, but I, I hope he'll call the White House and, and whatever person that is called or his name, I hope he becomes the new CDC director because the CDC hasn't been able to figure out this virus in five months, so I don't know how the Big 12 has figured it out. <laughs> Greeny, this is about politics, local politics. Uh, Big 10 and, and the Pac-12 uh, looked around at their constituency and they made a quick decision. The SEC, the ACC, and the Big 12, Bowlesby uh, included, uh, are, are listening to not only their presidents, but to their, their governmental leaders. And right now, I think they're pushing them to get as close to September 26 as possible. Th th that is still like, like climbing Mount Everest, but it it's a good game to play. And there's also another game going on, and that's the, that's the Game of Thrones between the Power Five commissioners. And they have already eliminated uh, Kevin Warren of the Big Ten and Larry Scott uh, of the Pac-12. So the remaining three are still alive for the crown. Well, what does that mean? And when, when you, I, I, that's fascinating to me. When you say that, what do you mean? Um, I can't say the, the word on, on a family television show, but uh, th this is a macho game going on, Greeny. Uh, it, it's who can outlast uh, the other one. Uh, who can look the best when it's all over. And, and it, it doesn't mean anything in, in, in the macro sense of whether we're going to have college football or not, but, but it, it's about trying to gain power in this, in this rudderless ship called college football. All right, fair enough. I, I, I get it. Now I come to Ryan, and Ryan, we'll get into something personal here, if, if you don't mind my asking, <coughs> because you, your son plays at Arizona State. That is a conference whose season mm -hmm. was, for all intents and, and purposes, canceled or at least postponed as of the last couple of days. So I, I just wonder what you can tell us about that, what, what conversations you've had with him and, and anything else you're willing to share. Oh, yeah. I mean, as soon as it happened, uh, he kind of, before I even read it online, he had already given me a call. He FaceTimed uh, me and Yank, and he was kind of talking about it, and he was extremely sad. I mean, he, you know, he has worked all offseason to be prepared for this, and it's also really cool that his best friend is a graduate student at Stanford who also plays football. He's the captain of the defense, Malik Antoine, and, and we've kind of talked throughout the whole process, and I remember when the Pac-12 was starting to get together. The players were getting together to come out with a list of demands. And I remember those conversations and both of them saying, like, I really want to play. I hope this doesn't affect us. And I'm not saying that this is the reason. And, and I heard Paul talk about politics. And maybe this is uh, close to that, but not necessarily the same. There were two conferences that players got together 
and said, you know what, we want a voice. There were two conferences that players got together and showed that at least in a small amount of them, they could come together, be on one accord, be on one page, and challenge the status quo. Both of those conferences, the Big Ten and the Pac-12, have already decided that they aren't playing football. That's not happening in the other three conferences. You hear in Louisiana, which if you want to talk about making a decision based on the current state, Louisiana has been a hot spot for the coronavirus since the beginning of this pandemic, but they're still going to play. There's actually teams in this state that are trying to get games right now that teams are denying because they say they don't want to play a team from Louisiana or add them to their schedule. And so in talking to Jordan, he was like, Pop, I understand it. He's like, I still want to play, but I understand it. You know, it also had, we had the conversation about being able to go to class. So what's the difference between these students on campus being able to sit in classrooms where there is no testing, where there will not be as stringent of a protocol, but now we can't go out and play football or be in the places where there is testing, where there is medical staff, where there is guidelines, where there is restrictions, where there is things that we understand these are ways we have to move in order to be safe. And so I think everyone's confused. Jordan is confused, but he's stuck to at least to make himself feel okay, he keeps saying they have to do what's right, Pop. They have to take care of us. They have to take all precautions. I think what's going to be hard, that if on September 26, if the commissioner of the, of the Big 12 is correct and the season can be played, and I pray it does. I pray that these kids are healthy. I pray that they have a great season. I pray that they're able to live out some of their dreams. If that works, what does the Big 10 and the Pac-12 say then? How do they try to force people to go out and play in the spring and say that they care more about student athletes by making them play two seasons in a calendar year than the other schools did by correctly assessing this problem and getting things done. Who's right? I don't know. Maybe we never get a season from either, but I know right now kids in the Pac-12, kids in the Big Ten are hurting, but they are trying to understand.